So first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Han for organizing this uh, online seminar. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about the Boltzmann equation for uniform shear flow. Uh, this is joint work with uh, uh, my uh, collaborator, Shang Chen Liu in Jilan University. So let me first start from very uh, brief introduction uh, to the background of the problem. Uh, so uh, usually, uh, if we consider a uh, rarefied gas, then this non-dimensional number uh, called the Lutz number uh, should be very important. Uh, for instance, this uh, number is defined to be the ratio of uh, mean free parts uh, with respect to the typical lens. So, so usually actually this number is uh, strictly positive and also finite. So in the limit case, this gross number is zero or even in case this number is uh, uh, very small, uh, for instance, less than uh, uh, 1.01, 1 .01, and then we try to regard this kind of gas as an ideal uh, continuum, then the motion of this kind of gas is governed by the Euler equations. So this is well known. And also in case the Lewis number is uh, somehow is unit one, uh, then uh, this is the region uh, of the rarefied gas. The motion will be governed by the Boltzmann equation. Then in the limiting case of infinity, uh, even though, uh, even in the case in this uh, Lewis number is sufficiently large, for instance, greater than 10, uh, then uh, the motion will be uh, governed by the so-called free molecule flow. Then usually it's just a transport equation for uh, distribution of the particle. So even uh, Lewis number is strictly po uh, positive physically, in the range like uh, is, is very small, but the node that uh, is not so large, uh, then uh, we can use the uh, Navier-Stokes equation to describe the motion. So you can regard this fluid equation as the first order correction in terms of the strength, uh, in, in terms of viscosity and also heat conductivity uh, that can be derived in terms of the uh, cruise number. Uh, so uh, this is first order correction to the Euler. Uh, and also you can regard it as a small cruise number of per approximation uh, to the kinetic Boltzmann equation. So this is quite a general view uh, to look at the relation between those uh, governing equations at the uh, macro and the micro level. And then let us see the uh, uniform shear flow. So usually we can also call it a uh, simple shear flow. So, uh, and then I just in short, I call it USF. And uh, in the monograph uh, given by Kazuo uh, Santos, so this book, Kinetic Theory of Gases in Shear Flows, Nonlinear Transportation uh, Transport, uh, uh, actually is quite a, uh, a systematic or uh, numerical study of the uh, shear flow uh, at the kinetic level. So uh, just the uh, introduce a little bit of motivation. For instance, at the fluid level, uh, well, the cruise number uh, may not be zero, even it is very small, then governed by the Euler or low Stokes equations. Then we see this is a linear flow, uh, linear shear flow. Uh, for instance, the horizontal velocity uh, is uh, actually linear uh, in along the normal direction, for instance, y direction. Uh, then uh, this is diversion free uh, velocity field uh, and the uh, uh, density is uh, uniform constant everywhere and also temperature uh, is independent of the space. So it's spatially homogeneous and this temperature may uh, depend on time because uh, due to the shear motion, the temperature of the system may increase in time. Uh, so this alpha is uh, Without a loss of generality, let, let us take actually strictly positive. So it's uh, actually is the, uh, uh, is the strength of this uh, uh, shear rate motion. So that's the, uh, we just call it the shear rate. Uh, 
On the other hand, uh, we can also uh, try to understand the, this kind of sharing, uh, sharing motion uh, by, uh, by studying, their, uh, 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 studying the motion at the kinetic level. So uh, in this level, like the Lawson number, uh, you see that it's, it's unit one. Uh, we have to use the Boltzmann equation uh, to, to describe the uh, collisions of particles. So uh, the unknown function we have to determine now is uh, uh, velocity distribution or probability function uh, that only depending on time and the velocity. That's, that's, uh, that's the main issue we, have, we are going to study to determine. So, uh, so this, uh, uh, you, uh, uh, for this function, uh, you see that usually we, we have to assume that uh, as velocity goes to infinity for very large velocity, uh, then this density uh, distribution of the particle would be uh, very small. Uh, so most of uh, somehow the uh, particle will locate in, in uh, with, uh, with, uh, with uh, velocities of, of in the finite region. Uh, so it means that uh, uh, it's, it's a seldom to see the, the particles with very large velocity. So this is the physical situation. And then uh, uh, the motion, the time change, the change rate of this uh, distribution function would be given by the, uh, the compilation of uh, two kinds of effects. So one fact is, uh, uh, is due to the bilinear correction, uh, we try to regard it as a particle as elastic uh, uh, balls. So making this kind of uh, bilinear correction then this part will be divided by the Boltzmann collision term. So later on, we'll make it more precise. And the second term is, uh, uh, is a shear force. So this force, just formally, you can see that is acting under horizontal direction and uh, uh, is linear in the uh, vertical uh, velocity. And the rate is given exactly by this alpha, which is uh, strictly positive. Uh, the main feature of this, uh, uh, just very uh, heuristically, uh, for this uh, 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 unknown density uh, distribution function determined by this uh, spatially homogeneous uh, Boltzmann equation with this kind of uh, linear shearing force term, uh, where uh, would be following. So, uh, uh, so you can see that uh, in case this alpha is zero, if you just look at the Boltzmann uh, collision operator, then uh, this guy will be invariant under rotation so that we can expect in case initial data uh, is, uh, uh, is invariant under rotation, then your solution will be invariant under rotation, then your solution uh, will be uh, as an tropic, for instance, uh, uh, radially symmetric in velocity. However, in case we, uh, we have this kind of a shearing uh, force, then we cannot expect uh, the solution generally can be isentropic. So usually it should be anisotropic in velocity. So that's the first feature we have to observe. And then the second uh, thing is, uh, if you look at the uh, time evolution of the second moment, for instance, the uh, energy of this uh, uh, system, you will see that, uh, so the Boltzmann collision will, uh, will conserve the energy. And usually this shear, uh, uh, shear force will produce additional uh, uh, heat flux. And then that one uh, will, uh, will change the, uh, the energy of the system. Uh, actually, uh, uh, in the end, uh, this kind of shearing uh, shear force will increase the energy. And mathematically, even uh, this can be proved later in case uh, this alpha uh, shear strength is uh, su uh, suitably small. And certainly, uh, from numerical simulation, uh, actually from the book by uh, by Kato, uh, Santos book. Uh, 
usually numerically we can see that this solution uh, may only have the polynomial large velocity tail. Uh, for instance, uh, in case uh, alpha is zero, we know that in large time, the solution to the Boltzmann equation usually determined by the Gaussian, uh, uh, that determined by the initial data, which has the same mass and momentum and energy. So uh, in that case, actually, uh, one velocity is very large, and then the tail will be exponential decay. However, if alpha is not zero, uh, this is a general phenomenon. So for any positive alpha, and then uh, this, uh, uh, the solution numerically, uh, we can see that only uh, for large velocity only has a polynomial decay. So uh, this is somehow, uh, this is, uh, uh, shows that actually uh, the uh, distribution uh, described by this equation, so somehow described the long equilibrium uh, phenomena. So this is uh, uh, quite different from the, the case alpha equals zero. Let us see the uh, very uh, informal derivation of the uniform uh, simple uh, flow. Uh, so just to look at a, a two-dimensional case, uh, the motion of the rarefied gas flow will be, uh, for instance, they contains in this kind of uh, in infinite channel. So horizontal direction suppose is spatially periodic uh, with a size zero, uh, for instance, zero to one. And the uh, vertical direction y is in the whole uh, space. And then the motion of the rarefied gas in case cruise number is unit one will be governed by uh, this uh, two dimensional Boltzmann equation. So left hand is just a transport along x, y direction with velocity uh, v1 and the v2 respectively. And uh, this transport will be balanced by again, the Boltzmann uh, operator. So, uh, if we want to look for solution of the specific form, uh, this F no longer explicitly depend on the uh, Y direction. So dependence on the Y variable, this spatial variable uh, only appears uh, in the place actually uh, the molecular velocity uh, along the horizontal direction. So this is kind of a sure uh, of, uh, of the molecular velocity. Uh, so along the uh, uh, vertical direction in space. Uh, and then, uh, so uh, we want to uh, check whether uh, for general flow determined by this two dimensional Boltzmann equation, indeed it has this kind of uh, specific form. So we have to plug this form to the, uh, the previous two dimensional Boltzmann equation and then uh, just uh, with, uh, for simplicity, we just uh, still use uh, 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 the first component of velocity still use V1. Uh, then uh, this specific form, uh, we are satisfied the following Boltzmann equation. So this equation now we have already make a uh, translation. Uh, so this will be independent of Y variable. So you can see that this is a uh, transport equation along horizontal direction uh, and then balanced by uh, two effects. One is a steer uh, collision in scale. The other is, uh, uh, is, uh, is a shearing force uh, along, the, uh, vertical uh, along the horizontal direction that, that's actually propo uh, uh, proportional uh, to the uh, uh, vertical velocity uh, with rate alpha. So uh, then in particularly, if we look for uh, spatially homogeneous distribution function, then this partial X will be uh, ignored. Then uh, this uh, X dependence uh, equation will be reduced to spatially homogeneous. Uh, this exact equation we're going to study. So this is somehow is uh, quite a, a formal 
uh, immediate derivation of the uniform uh, shear flow for Boltzmann equation. So uh, today's talk will focus on this equation, uh, but we will not touch anything about convergence. Uh, for instance, the fluid dynamic limit from this two dimensional Boltzmann equation uh, to the flow that we already uniform shear flow that we already obtained here. Uh, so, uh, so now it means that we only focus on the uh, this uh, spatially homogeneous Boltzmann equation for uniform shear flow. Uh, so the first issue we're going to talk about is uh, uh, global in time existence of a solution, uh, particularly for smooth solution, regular solution. Uh, so that there you will see that uh, there has been uh, some studies, mathematical studies on uh, existence of, of uh, uh, weak solutions or maybe minor solutions for this equation. In case uh, initial data is given uh, uh, and also has finite energy. Uh, so uh, also I will make some discussion in the case the initial data has infinite energy. So the situation will be quite different in that direction. The second issue uh, is long-term behavior so in case we have a global in time existence for some suitable initial data with a finite energy, so what happens as time goes to infinity? As I mentioned that numerically, we can see a uh, second moment that, uh, uh, that energy will go to uh, uh, somehow change, right? So usually physically, you can imagine that uh, due to the uh, internal, uh, internal heat, and then the energy will go to infinity. Uh, so uh, then uh, this will be quite different from the long-term behavior in case alpha is zero, then what really happened that when he goes to infinity, the solution will goes to, uh, goes to well. So whether determined by actually time independent solution or not. Uh, so and the third issue is to, to study uh, the dependence of the solution on this uh, uh, shear rate, this alpha. Uh, for instance, if alpha is very, very small, uh, what about uh, if we look at a uh, tiny expansion of this solution in alpha, what about the coefficient function in the uh, first number of a few terms? Uh, then I have to give you uh, a few remarks uh, before uh, we can answer those kind of issue for this equation. Uh, for instance, the first one is, uh, as I already mentioned, whether or not initial data has a finite energy will be very important. So indeed, uh, you will see that uh, if initial data have lot is, has a finite energy, uh, the long time behavior will exactly determined by uh, self-similar uh, solution later on you will see. But in case uh, F not, has uh, infinite uh, energy, infinite, uh, infinite second order moments, uh, then uh, the long time behavior uh, would be different. And also the uh, and also uh, the type of intermolecular interaction will play a role in the analysis. Uh, for instance, if you look at this Shuri uh, force. Uh, Relate to uh, 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 balance by this correction. So uh, you see that because this is spatially homogeneous, those function only depends on the velocity. So we have really considered uh, in order to have a solution, we have really considered the balance of these two terms in case velocity is very large. So because this term somehow is, uh, uh, is for instance, is unit one. Uh, because you have to take one derivative and then multiply one velocity. So for large velocity, so somehow this is unit one. Uh, but this Q actually, uh, you know, uh, in case we talk about a kind of collision uh, kernel, then for large velocity, and then this would behave uh, in case F quite close to uh, e uh, equi equilibrium states, then this Q will determine by the collision frequency. And then that one will uh, 
uh, has the magnitude uh, uh, determined by the uh, gamma, uh, gamma law. So uh, in that case, if gamma only, uh, in case gamma is equal to zero, uh, then the magnitude will be uh, unit, then we get a balance. So, uh, so uh, in this talk, we were uh, only focus on the uh, so-called maximum molecule in the action potential. Uh, later, I will make it more precise. Uh, and also, uh, this uniform uh, simple flow is also is just a one kind of a homoallergenic solution uh, that has been introduced independently by uh, Galkin and the Schustel very long time ago. So uh, they actually did a lot of study uh, for the computation, this kind of homoallergenic solution for, uh, for, uh, for the Boltzmann equation uh, and, uh, and also for very general uh, general form. So the solution can be very explicit, but uh, stability and also uh, instability of those kind of solution, uh, the mathematical study seems uh, quite few. Uh, and also uh, we have to say that uh, this kind of home energetic solution, uh, particularly here, uh, this uh, uniform simple flow uh, that we are uh, Started is quite different from the case the planar uh, quick flow uh, in the kinetic theory. Uh, so uh, in that case, we have to consider uh, the uh, boundary. So the graphite gas is confined by uh, two parallel plane, upper plane and the lower plane. They're parallel, uh, and then these two planes are making uh, relative uh, motion with uh, uh, opposite velocity. And then due to the, this uh, relative motion, and then we get her uh, at least at the fluid level, you can get a, a queer flow. So uh, how to prove the existence of this kind of uh, 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 rapid gas flow, uh, existence and also stability? It seems that uh, so far, there's quite a few mathematical results. Oh, however, I like to say that here, I didn't mention uh, so many extensive grade process by fluid people uh, uh, for the study of their uh, many uh, 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 either queer flow or different other kinds of flow that uh, maybe we already attend so many talks uh, organized in this kind of seminar. So uh, here, let us look at what happens to the, uh, in the, uh, for the kinetic uh, uh, shear flow. Uh, in case there is no uh, boundary uh, there. So uh, for this kind of, uh, for the model uh, on the uh, planar queer flow, uh, either we can uh, look at a Caso Santos book or we can uh, look for uh, Sony's book. So uh, let me see the, uh, let us see the formulation of the problem and also uh, the main result. So uh, you want to look at the existence of the solution. Let us first look at the conservation laws of the, uh, of the system. So indeed, we will show that we have conservation of mass. And also, uh, even though we have a shear motion, we can also assume conservation of momentum in case initial data has an additional uh, property. Uh, so the only, main, uh, the only concern we have to take care of is the uh, temperature of the system, because that one may increase in time. For instance, let us recall the property of Q. So the Q has this five uh, collision invariant, one uh, velocity V and also second, mo uh, second velocity. Uh, so uh, if we let this capital F is a solution to this spatially homogeneous Boltzmann equation for uniform shear flow, uh, so this alpha is strictly positive, it's constant. And then if you multiply the uh, one and then take an integration in velocity, uh, then uh, suppose uh, it's valid to make an integration by part for sure uh, uh, force this term, uh, then we get our actual conservation of mass. So it means that if initial we have uh, given mass, then uh, for all positive time, the solution will have the same mass. 
And also along the horizontal Vx1 direction, if we modify V1 and then take the integration velocity, similarly, we get this balance of the uh, first momentum by uh, actually the change rate will be related to the momentum along the uh, vertical direction. So, uh, so even though this is just a balance, however, if you look at the uh, V2 and the V3 direction, we have conservation of the momentum. So that if we assume that initially uh, there is no mo uh, motion, uh, uh, there is no uh, momentum uh, flux along the uh, X2 and the X3 direction, and then this will be uh, conserved and then plug into here, and this is identical to zero, then we have conservation of momentum along uh, X1 direction. So this is the last uh, uh, balance law for uh, energy. So the change rate of the energy will be given by minus alpha, this uh, uh, heat flux along the X1 and X2 direction. Uh, this may not be zero for uh, an isotropic uh, solution is capital F. So then uh, with our losses, loss of generality, let us assume that for all time that is non-active, we have a, a unit one mass and also zero momentum along these three direction. And also we try to assume that the initial energy is finite and also strictly positive. So we have a long trivial F naught, which uh, satisfy those conditions. Then uh, back to this uh, uh, change rate of the energy, as I mentioned that uh, due to the, this is, this is term induced by the shear force because alpha is positive. And then uh, the, the, uh, the relative motion, the shear, uh, the shear motion will induce internal uh, heat as uh, uh, viscous heating. Uh, because usually this heat flux is may not be zero as mentioned. So this term will drive the system to de uh, depart from the uh, equilibrium states. Uh, so uh, once again, I have to mention that if R is zero, and then this is we have a conservation of temperature energy, and then we can expect the solution we gives to a global mass wind exactly. Uh, this global mass medium, uh, the fluid quantity exactly uh, is given by the uh, corresponding uh, fluid quantity of initial data. So this dynamics will be uniquely uh, determined in case alpha is zero, whether or not initial data is, in, is large or small. There's quite uh, many results in this direction. Uh, then, uh, however, here, uh, the temperature uh, denoted by theta of T, and then uh, we see that may increase in time. So uh, later on, we will prove that in case alpha is strictly positive, suitably small, and then it's a heat flux indeed, not only uh, is not equal to zero, but also strictly lacking. So this is negative, that indeed means that this is produce a positive increasing uh, for this uh, temperature. Let us see uh, how to get a solution. So the strategy is called the homo energetic uh, solution. So it means that uh, we look for solution uh, in the uh, self-similar form uh, in order to take out the possible growth of the temperature. So it means that this dependence on the uh, on time actually uh, uh, will be taken care in terms of the this uh, this scaling. Uh, that uh, uh, starting from a given function capital G only depends on the velocity. So, uh, so you see that this is uh, self-similar scaling with preserved mass uh, and also preserved momentum in case G has a zero momentum. But this self-similar form will take care of the growth of the uh, second order moments. For instance, if you multiply uh, second moments and then take an integration and then the temperature will grow with the rate exponential to two beta t. So for a constant beta, then the temperature will exponentially grow in time. So this kind of exponential growth phenomenon for temperature has been already observed physically. 
So that's the reason why we try to look for this kind of a self-similar uh, solution. So now you see that this beta is actually still unknown function, uh, unknown constant that will be determined by solution itself. So uh, uh, later on, we'll see how to do that. Uh, so if we plot this specific self-similar form to the, uh, to the uh, Boltzmann equation, previous Boltzmann equation for uniform shear flow, then uh, this actually capital G, depending only on velocity, will satisfy the following equation. And then the only change is happens to partial T. Uh, you see that? Uh, so this is the time change rate term will be changed to the, uh, this term. So this is a sort of a damping relaxation of the distribution G. Then you see that uh, uh, due to the physical motivation, this beta is a strictly positive. And this term indeed is a linear relaxation. This is good. Uh, this is the sign, electric sign uh, beta is positive, electric beta indeed indicated is a relaxation. Uh, for instance, if you multiply V square, and then this is, you get a uh, positive sign for, uh, for energy of G. So this is a uh, uh, relaxation will decrease uh, the energy, uh, even, uh, even in the stationary case. Uh, but uh, we know that this shearing force is a linear shear force increase the energy, uh, produce the energy. A uh, key keep in mind is conserved energy. So the balance now between the relaxation and this uh, uh, shearing force will uh, possibly produce uh, stationary solution, a steady solution for this uh, function G. So this is actually the uh, basic motivation uh, to uh, consider existence of this uh, self-similar uh, profile capital G. So uh, indeed, it's very reasonable to look for G in the following function class. So this G actually has a unit one mass and also zero momentum and also a positive for finite energy. For instance, here, without loss of generality, let us assume the energy exactly given by three. So let's fix this kind of constants uh, and then look for uh, regard, uh, regard those, uh, uh, this identity as a restriction uh, to solve uh, for, uh, for solving uh, the unknown function G satisfying this equation. So this, key, uh, this actually is basic idea why we call this capital F a homo energetic uh, solution. And then uh, we see that there's one thing is very important because this beta is constant is still uh, not determined. Uh, but however, if we look at the solvability of this uh, homogeneous Boltzmann equation, and then uh, because this Q has a uh, five invariant uh, uh, moments then if you multiply particularly second order moments, and then this average should be zero. So this force actually left hand multiply V square, take integration will be zero. And then this will gives us the representation of this constant beta determine exactly, explicitly determined in terms of the, uh, this integration V1, V2 times G take integration with this coefficient alpha over three. So this is three, exact responding to the constants, uh, that's, the, uh, uh, that's the constants appearing in the restriction con uh, condition here. Uh, this temperature is given by, energy is given by three, it's constant. So now uh, we are going, to, we can formulate the problem for the stationary problem. Uh, I mean, to look for a solution, uh, we are going to look for a self-similar uh, profile, so, uh, profile capital G, uh, and then this uh, uh, G will uh, uh, simultaneously uh, deter uh, uh, determine with this beta, but beta will determine by, uh, by the uh, solvability of G, and then uh, the target equation to be solved then will be reduced to uh, this equation without any unknown constant, but with this kind of restriction. So this is good. 
because this means that, okay, uh, if we can see that this, if alpha formally, alpha is zero, uh, if we let them both, uh, the left hand will be vanishing, and then this Q is zero, then we can expect uh, this G will go to the exactly the equilibrium states. So uh, these conservations will determine the fluid quantity of uh, the limited function as alpha goes to zero. Then uh, we can see this means that uh, basically this G will be uh, uh, a sort of a, uh, long fluid uh, perturbation of the steady solution of, of the Gaussian. Uh, however, you will see that uh, uh, because numerically we see uh, uh, the solution uh, where has a large velocity, uh, has a polynomial tail in large velocity. So uh, we cannot expect uh, uh, our solution will decay in velocity uh, exponentially. Uh, so it means that if you want to use the perturbation approach uh, in alpha, uh, then we cannot expect uh, this kind of a series uh, will be absolutely convergent for, uh, for any velocity. Uh, so later I will make it more precise maybe. Uh, for instance, so formally, uh, if you look at this equation and then this uh, shear rate alpha, uh, in case alpha is, uh, uh, for instance, uh, uh, the case we are looking at is uh, this shear rate is very small. And then this alpha will play the same role as the Lewis number. Uh, then uh, it's natural to look for a solution this uh, tennis theories in this small parameter alpha, as I mentioned. And you plug inside, you can somehow determine this G naught is purely uh, fluid, exactly given uh, by this restriction, uh, is given by this uh, normalized Gaussian. Uh, yeah, which has the same mass and also zero momentum and also uh, the same temperature. So this tells us that uh, the high order, uh, in the high order terms, those, uh, uh, those correction, G1, G2, G3, they should be uh, totally kinetic, long fluid with respect to this G0. So, uh, uh, for instance, uh, uh, but uh, let me emphasize again, uh, because uh, in, uh, informally this is true. However, for the conversions, we cannot expect it can be absolutely convergent uh, because, uh, because usually this is G1, G2, G3 uh, will be, kind, uh, will be uh, in, in the form of this G0 times some uh, polynomials uh, with degree uh, increasing. So, uh, uh, it usually is very hard to, uh, usually it, it is even from the numerical uh, simulation, uh, is, it, it is impossible uh, to prove that is, uh, is this infinite series for any velocity is absolutely convergent. Uh, so indeed from the, uh, from the book, uh, Gazo Santos book, and then we can get an explicit formula of this G1 exactly even by minus some constant determined by the, uh, some functions, the clean color of the Boltzmann operator. And also G2, G3 will be much more complicated. So here I like to ignore that. So let us see uh, how the uh, intermolecular uh, potential plays a role uh, in, uh, determine the, uh, in determining the solution of this uh, uh, self-similar profile. So this uh, can be very, uh, can be seen from the, just the very uh, quicker observation for balance of these three terms with respect to their magnitude. So this is a relaxation term and also shear force, uh, shear force term, and also this uh, uh, collision term. So let us just uh, very recall very quickly the, uh, the Boltzmann operator so in general, we'll be related to the uh, collision kernel capital B here, depending only on the relative velocity and also this uh, cosine theta. Uh, and then uh, in the cut of case, mathematically, we can assume this B in this form. So this is a kinetic part, this angular part. We assume this gamma is, is in this, uh, this parameter in this range, minus three, one, 
B0 is cut off. Okay, so we have uh, Omega representation of uh, post collisional velocity pair in terms of uh, pre collisional velocity pair V and B star, etc. Okay, so if you look at the magnitude of uh, these three terms, so we already see these two already balanced. So the most important to see the balance between the shear force with this collision term. As I mentioned that these two terms, unit one uh, is given by the unit of this just the G. But this Q exactly in case the, the first thing component is much closer to the, to the equilibrium states than uh, this exact determined by the, uh, the collision frequency that uh, somehow uh, behaves like the velocity modulus uh, gamma power. So if you look at the balance for large velocity, uh, this is unit one. So the only chance to get a solution for this G is gamma equals zero. So it means that under such formulation, in order to get the existence of a solution, we need to require gamma equals zero. And then that's exactly for the Maxwell molecule model. So that's the case we can consider. Now, let me re describe the uh, result in this kind of setting. So let us introduce a polynomial function in velocity. So uh, it's one plus V square power L. And then uh, we can uh, gather a positive constants uh, L zero that's related to the, uh, uh, to the, uh, to the power and this velocity, uh, polynomial velocity. Uh, such that for any uh, polynomial order L uh, on or after L zero, we can find the uh, alpha zero depending only on L that is strictly positive. Uh, so once uh, uh, L is given, then we can get this alpha zero. Uh, then such that uh, for given this alpha zero, and then we consider arbitrary alpha, this shear rate uh, between zero and alpha zero. Then we look at uh, this uh, stationary steady uh, Boltzmann equation uh, with the previous formulation. So uh, this G satisfies the previous restriction that has a uh, uh, unit mass, zero momentum and uh, temperature uh, three, uh, temperature one actually, energy three. And then uh, this, uh, equation we have uh, unique smooth solution. So uh, in the following sense, so uh, the restriction will be satisfied. And also if we consider difference uh, between G and also up to the first order, uh, the first zeros order you see that is, uh, is just a global max really mu and first order with coefficient that C is given by one over to be zero. So this B0 determined by the integration, uh, determined by the, this uh, uh, interaction, uh, this collision kernel in the Boltzmann uh, uh, operator. So this B, B0 only angular part times Z squared times one minus Z squared DZ from minus one to one. So this is strictly positive constants. So if you look at this difference, uh, and then we cannot expect actually this one will decay uh, in velocity uh, exponentially. So because even though you take a, a velocity derivative up to case order, up to a case order, so it will be smooth function in velocity. With this, uh, uh, this actually L, I mean, this could be uh, very large anyway. Uh, and then this will be bounded, the arrow will be bounded by uh, up to the uh, second order of the shear rate alpha. So this alpha can go to zero here. So this exactly is the uniform in alpha uh, estimates uh, when we consider the existence of this capital G. So let me make it more precise. So this estimate shows that the unique existence of a smooth solution uh, of the solution will take this form. So the uh, if you look at this form, so uh, uh, I mean, in the previous slides uh, that I informally explained to you that it could be tiny expansion in alpha, but here what we can determine is the first two uh, uh, terms. So the first is Gaussian, is Gaussian, 
times this is a second order polynomial. And the error term we can determine is high order. But in the sense of actually the L infinity norm with polynomial weight. So uh, keep in mind, we cannot, uh, it is impossible to get our exponential decay in velocity. And also this beta is uh, given by this form, if we plug a formula, this uh, expression to here, and then we see this constant beta to be determined by the solution itself exactly is uh, uh, the low order is the shear rate square with this coefficient that determined by the collision and with some uh, high order correction. And second the remark means that, uh, says that, okay, this solution may have only polynomial large velocity. Let me emphasize again, numerically by Monocono simulation this is already observed. Uh, mathematically, we can see in the following way. So uh, if we just uh, forget about uh, bilinear coercion, just uh, uh, look at the uh, uh, relaxation determined uh, by this uh, uh, bilinear coercion uh, around the uh, global Maxwellian. So for the Maxwell molecule, so this is a, just a positive constant. Uh, and then we have to look at the balance between this uh, shear force with this uh, uh, relaxation. And uh, if we multiply the polynomial weight with uh, uh, in this form is uh, is uh, v square and it's power l, and then uh, you can write this equation in this form. Then basically we are going to look at the dynamics of weighted uh, solution uh, like this. So basically we are going to require uh, this coefficient is positive constant plus two alpha l times this, uh, uh, this function. So this is uniform bounded velocity. So that's the reason why uh, we have to ask that in case we expect the solution, this is stationary solution uh, has decay in velocity up to L's order. Once L is given, then we have to require this shear rate is suitably small relatively to one over L. So that's why this alpha zero is proportional to one over L. So uh, there are a few remarks we have to say here, the existence of a major, major, uh, major uh, valued minor solution has been already proved by James Lota, uh, Velas Velascas uh, in 2018. Uh, so, uh, uh, so, their solution actually is uh, uh, obtained by uh, some uh, contraction mapping based on the uh, mild formulation uh, in suitable function space. So here, the current result somehow can uh, supplement that result with uniqueness regularity, give velocity, and also alpha dependence uh, structure. And also the long activity we can prove. Uh, actually, we can prove long activity of the, this uh, self-similar profile uh, using the dynamical stability in self-similar scaling. So it means that we try to look at our original function f depending on time and velocity, look at the scaling, self-similar uh, scaling, and then uh, we can show t goes to infinity, uh, and then we are goes to the self-similar uh, profile. And recently, this has been shown by Bobilev, Lota, and also Blas uh, uh, Kass uh, in weak topology. So here we somehow revisit the proof in regular surplus space in perturbation framework, particularly including the small space inhomogeneous uh, in case X variable is just a torus. For instance, let us look at this uh, uh, X dependent especially homogeneous only depends on X variable. So here I didn't talk about two dimensional setting. So that problem would be much harder. So here let us look, only look at a, a variation along possibly along the X direction and look at a, the initial vary problem. And then we can see that suppose G exactly is a self-similar profile and the beta is defined as before that we already fixed. Then we can see there are some constants that could be small, epsilon zero, lambda also could be zero, strictly positive, C usually very large, such that in case we have initial data physically, long negative, and also suppose 
somehow the perturbation this f not around the this self similar profile with much higher that's the exponential uh, polynomial weight suppose we have space uh, derivative up to uh, second order with the same for instance else order polynomial weight that is small and also we have conservation uh, mass and also momentum we didn't assume the conservation of the energy uh, later on we explain then we can see this is a Cauchy problem where admits and meet a unique solution non-active solution satisfy the following estimates in a self-similar formulation uh, time goes to zero your our solution where it goes to the stationary uh, self-similar profile capital G in L infinity with this kind of polynomial weight uh, that is exponentially decay in time the size will be uh, is the same size as beta. So keep in mind, beta is alpha square. Uh, so that's the square of uh, shear rate. Uh, so uh, unit cat rate, keep in, we have to put additional uh, exponential decay in velocity. And also, if we take a, a derivative, then uh, the only difference is this decay rate is still exponential, but the size will be unit one. Uh, we are uh, somehow independent of alpha. So just a few remarks. So uh, this result immediately implies the uh, convergence of uh, original this uh, uh, time uh, spatial homogeneous uh, time dependent function f in this self similar formulation goes to the stationary uh, uh, self similar profile capital G. And the beta actually half a square, I already explained to you. That's the sheer effect we think. And also F naught does not need to have the same energy with this capital G. So why? Because if you let a little f in this form and then uh, rewrite the equation, take away G and then take integration, look at it, uh, actually time change rate of the perturbation of the energy, we get this kind of uh, ordinary differential equation. So because this kind of uh, uh, these two terms will be balanced to each other. So this exactly tells you that, so this is perturbation uh, with respect to the perturbed energy where, because beta is strictly positive. So this will decay exponentially uh, in time uh, with rate uh, exponential beta, uh, beta t. And in case X dependence, the convergence rate for higher order is exponential with the size one. Uh, that will be independent of shear rate. This is quite natural to see. So just a uh, very go through very quickly rather than the li literature, alpha equals zero. So there's many studies by Bobilev, Chechenani, later on by Kalonika, Moimoto, Tongyang, Huijiang Zhao. Alpha equals zero is non-zero case. Uh, uh, then uh, many results look for homoenergetic solution by Chechenani at uh, beginning and the Bobilev uh, Tarafini, Speaker, and a series of significant progress by James Lota, uh, Blas Paz. And uh, recently by Matthew's Taylor, uh, they look for, uh, they can see the long existence of a self similar profile with uh, uh, exponential tail in large velocity. And also, Bobby Lev Lota, recent progress by, by them, long term behavior for even much more general deformation matrix A. Uh, they use the popular formula because they are considering still maximum molecule case and also formulate the problem by solving some eigenvalue problem for high moments equation to, uh, uh, to determine that beta and then uh, to gather uh, self-similar profile in the Fourier space. So uh, I think uh, uh, I don't have uh, so much time. Let me go through a few uh, slides. So. Anyway, uh, what I want to emphasize uh, for possibility to construct a solution uh, for existence of the uh, stationary self similar profile, you can reduce uh, uh, the capital G in this form is looks like H is determined by initial data plus some bilinear term. So this actually initial homogeneous term will be order alpha and then you will see that in case this is uh, operator is invertible, this is bilinear, 
then uh, you can introduce the uh, Cauchy iteration. You, if, if you can introduce some function space, you can prove uh, the existence. So that gives us a possibility to show by construction mapping for small alpha still we can get an existence. But still we have some uh, uh, a difficulty to, uh, to overcome here because uh, a numerical observation tells us our perturbation cannot decay exponentially uh, in large velocity. So we cannot actually formulate perturbation in the usual way. We gather actually linearize the Boltzmann operator, we get a causivity in L2 framework. So what we have to introduce is the calculations. A splitting structure, it means that we look at a square root of mu times perturbation uh, in this form. So uh, one part would just decay uh, with poly polynomial. The other one is actually already decaying velocity uh, exponentially. So basically, we like to introduce this technical to decompose this equation uh, to two equation coupling equation. And then we have to take out the estimates on the first part and also second part. Uh, so because this part will be exactly based on the uh, entropy inequality, we have to introduce the uh, L2 estimates. So here, this part, we have to introduce the uh, L infinity. Uh, we estimate G1 along the characteristics. So uh, this kind of trick actually has been already introduced by Yen Guo and also later by uh, Yang Guo with his collaborator, now is my collaborator, Song Chen Liu, uh, in the current uh, uh, paper. Uh, and also uh, there is one trick things to estimate L infinity of G1 because there is no exponential weight here. Uh, it's quite tricky to estimate actually uh, because uh, linearized operator will be decomposed by the collision part and also some integral part uh, that will be put into the source term of this G1. So that G1, uh, that K operator may not be small usually if we put right hand. So how to absorb that operator for large velocity? So we use the trick uh, introduced by our key as Posito and the Quarenti in 1987. In this paper, we try to make use exactly that WL and one L is very large, and then we make use of largeness of the L to kill the source, this linear source for K operator in large velocity. There is another trick uh, to consider uh, unsteady problem, just the one key point we like to mention here, because there, uh, even though the uh, stationary self similar profile uh, conserve for all physical quantities, However, we didn't uh, make any assumption on the conservation of the uh, energy uh, for the long steady problem. So that uh, because the Boltzmann operator is degenerate along the that five direction because the kernel space. And then we have to uh, somehow to recover the dissipation of the microscopic fluid part under uh, this perturbation. So basically is uh, estimated on the uh, perturb the energy. That's if you like to use the 30 moments equation. Uh, uh, if you look at the, uh, uh, the kernel space is five dimensional. So we have to look at the high order uh, moments uh, equation. And then this is, uh, 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 so for the, because we have conservation of the mass and also momentum, in that case, we can, because the axis is in the torus domain, we can use the Pantana uh, inequality to estimate the, the mass and also the, uh, the momentum. But for energy, we have really make use of a new structure uh, that's related to the hypercoercivity property of the coupling uh, microscopic equations. This is the moments equations. For instance, uh, to the equation of C, we have to introduce this kind of multiplier test function related to the uh, temperature flux along x1 and x2. So you can see the antiderivative and then test this equation of C. Uh, and then we, uh, we see that we get this kind of a balance. 
So this actually uh, appears in the uh, equation of the energy. And this actually comes from the in fact, uh, equation of the higher moments. And then you see that this balance tells us, gives us a, a, a possibility to get to recover the dissipation of the, uh, dissipation of the perturbed energy with the size beta. So that's proportional uh, to alpha square. So we get this kind of uh, energy, uh, a priori estimates for, uh, for energy. Uh, and then uh, this will be bounded by the either uh, high order part and also micro, uh, the, fluid, uh, the long fluid part with a small coefficient determined by, uh, if you use cauchy schwarz some small constant, also some constant related to the, uh, the shear rate that is alpha. And then uh, uh, the other dissipation on the macroscopic part is based on, the, as I mentioned, the Pantana equality uh, uh, moved to, for, uh, to the high order uh, estimates and then take a, a suitable com a compilation. We can gather uh, energy and also energy dissipation. We can close the primary estimates. We can gather previous uh, time decay estimates. So I think that that's all uh, things I like to talk about today. Uh, thank you so much.